All right, guys, welcome to the Hungry for More call. My name is Julius Gilger, and I'm excited to have on my friend, my business partner. Um, he's a top producer with Family First Life. He's a senior vice president here at Family First Life, and I believe he's been with us for less than even two years. Um, help me welcome Gage Peart to the call. How you doing out there, my man? I'm doing great, dude. How about yourself? Hey, man, I'm blessed every day and, and thankful and happy to be here. So. Um, well, hey, you know, we got a lot of new people on the call, Gage. So, you know, I, I know maybe some people know your story, but I, I guarantee you most of the people on here don't. And, and a lot of people are going to be checking this out after today as well. So if you can tell us about tell us a little bit about when you got started and how you got started. And then we'll kind of jump in from there. Yeah, definitely, man. So um, I got my license approved in August of 2019. So um, we're coming up to two years here in two months. Um, but I was introduced to the opportunity, uh, through an Instagram direct message. And, uh, well, I actually got introduced to Jordan first. And of course, immediately, um, he tried starting recruiting us and I say us as me and Michaela. Um, and when he first told me about it, Julius, it went through one year and out the other. I was like, there's not a chance in heck I can, uh, I can sell life insurance. I can't sell anything. And that's just my mindset telling me that. Right. And that was in January when I met him. And then uh, of course we were following him on his journey and this was when he first got started and, uh, Michaela actually shadowed him, uh, for about three or four days and said, this dude doesn't know what the hell he's doing. I'm not doing that. <laughs> so I what said, were you doing for work not. at the time, man? You said what? What were you doing for work at the time? So I was an operations manager for a hospitality company, basically overseeing a, um, a guest services department and, a hot, uh, the housekeeping department. Um, okay. And that's really where I got like uh, my first true taste of independence because we had uh, three different properties in downtown Dallas. And so I was jumping from um, building a building, didn't really have someone micromanaging me. And that's what really was like, man, you know, I wish I could just work for myself and not work for somebody. Mm -hmm. um, and so fast forward a couple of months, you know, I was just unhappy with my, my um, position. I was making $15 an hour. I say that to everybody just to show them that I wasn't some crazy uh, talented person. I was making the bare minimum, making it work. And um, I was just unhappy. And Jordan uh, just reached out again and just said, you know, what is it going to take for you to listen to me? And so um, I just told him, I was like, man, send me something like, you know, I, I, I like you about and all, but you sound crazy telling me I can make 20,000 a month. And so I started listening to the podcast when I was working out and I listened to those for about a month straight. And I, I heard uh, Jermaine Clifford, she was an Uber driver. And then I heard um, another story about someone who was a bartender. And I was like, like a bartender or Uber driver can do this. You know, why, why are they so much better than me? And so I didn't really have anything to lose. Um, and so he sent me the voucher, knocked it out in 16 days, dude. And as soon as I passed the exam, I called Jordan and said, Hey dude, I'm quitting my job. And he was like, I don't know if you should do that. <laughs> and I was like, I don't, I don't have any other plans. I don't have anyone else, you know, offer me a job. So I'm just going to do this. And uh, so I, I really burned the ships from the beginning. Didn't have a plan B and just said that I was going to really make this work. So that's kind of like how I got introduced to the opportunity in awesome. August of 2019 is when I wrote my first policy. You know, what's funny is you said you, you got your first taste of independence and you were making 15 bucks an hour, dude. Like, wait, what? <laughs> like that, the, those, the, those two things go, don't even go hand in hand. You know what I mean? Like 15 bucks an hour, you're working at a job and you felt independent because you didn't have to sit in one place is what it sounds like versus you were, I mean, you were still an employee, right? There was really no independence, but you felt you got a taste of being able to move around, right? Correct. I wasn't sitting at a desk. I didn't have someone um, you know, wondering what I was doing every single hour. As long as the job got done, I could go hide in the closet and they wouldn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, so, all right, cool. So, so tell us about this, man. So you got started, um, you know, now you're a top producer, right? So now people see the gauge that they see today, top producer SVP, but 
What was one of your biggest challenges when you got started? Did you struggle on the phone? Yeah, man, I definitely struggled on the phone. I'd say my biggest struggle was my own mind, the, the mindset and the, the belief that I could do this myself. Um, I used to, I was terrible on the phones, Julius. It's crazy to me when people tell me that like, man, I, I love you on the phones. You're so good on the phones. It was like, I wish you would have seen me when I first got started because <laughs> it was horrendous. And so what I really did, the only reason I survived the business is I knew I lacked phone skills. So I made it up with activity. And this is when all we could really do was get Facebook leads. So I at least had a favorite hobby or favorite color. And so getting hung up on in 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, wasn't allowing me to improve my communication skills and my phone skills. So I'd go out and door knock these people and I'd at least get two to three minutes of trying to overcome objections and rebuttals in person. And what I really realized is that people are a lot nicer in person. That guy who's trying to yell at you, tell you to go up the Creek, like he's the nicest guy in the world when you see him in person. And so, um, and, and then just really, having the, the belief that I could do this. And so I've, I've told the story a couple of times, but like four months into this thing, I was out sending res resumes and thank God that my resume sucked because I didn't get any job offers. <laughs> and so I just kept showing up, man. And that's, that's the true testament of, of uh, your first, you know, I'd say nine months in this business is as long as you keep showing up and hopping on the calls, that's the only reason I didn't quit is because I hopped on, the Monday call. I hopped on Trey Honeycutt's Wednesday call. I hopped on the agency call Thursday. I hopped on the corporate call Friday. And I kept feeding myself um, positive knowledge and po positive information and kept giving me the conviction that anyone can do this. But if I wouldn't have hopped on those calls and if, if it wasn't for Michaela's support, we definitely wouldn't be having this phone call or if I had a good resume, which is crazy. That's wild, man. That, that's crazy to think you were applying for jobs while you were here. And I mean, I'm going to guess you were probably applying for jobs that were, you know, going to pay you close to what you were making before 15, 20 bucks an hour, even 25, right at the most. And now, you know, you're out there. What was your biggest deposit in a month at this point? Uh, 51,000. So 51,000. And how old are you? I'm 27. 27 years old, $51,000 in a month, right? So that's crazy, dude. So, so, all right. So, so talk to us about this. Cause you know, guys, if you don't know Gage, obviously you hear, you're hearing his story right now, but when we started the live dial teams, Gage was the number one guy leading the way, right? So, so first off, thank you Gage for being selfless and, and really leading the, the dial team because that's been become a staple of our organization. And, and really it's, it's transformed our organization over the last, you know, however many months we've, we've had it. So, so first off, thank you there, but if you can, you know, if we can go through maybe a role play of some calls, cause we have a bunch of people on here that, that are, that are dialing. We have a few people on here that today's their first dial day. So I think it'd be helpful for them to hear what that sounds like from a, you know, a professional dialer like yourself that work. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that so that's cool. What type of lead do you want to dial? You tell me, man. What, what were you dialing today? Um, I had a mixture of um, the instant Facebook leads, and then I also have um, some mortgage protection mailers that I was dialing on today. But let's do I Facebook because I you think the, you said what? Let's do Facebook if you don't mind, because okay. I think that's probably more relative to what the teams mainly dial. Yeah, yeah, hundred cool. percent. Okay. So um, ring, ring. Hello? Julius? Yes? Hey, Julius, this is Gage Peer just getting back to you in regards to that Facebook request you submitted online looking for some general final expense information. It's the one where you put down your favorite hobby is mowing the grass. Is that you? Uh, yeah. Okay, perfect. So the purpose of my call here, sir, is just to verify we have the correct information here for you, and I'll have you right off the phone. It looks like here you put down your date of birth as 5-5-1972. Is that right? Yep. Okay, cool. And then it looks like you're over on the uh, 777 success lane over there in Phoenix, Arizona. Is that right? That is, that is. Okay, perfect. So I'm assuming that you remember reading on there, Julius, all these plants are non-medical, meaning there's no blood work, urine, or, or physicals required by any doctors or anything. They've really simplified this process, and they just had me, the state licensed medical field underwriter, verify that you are who you say you are and that you're alive and well. 
not hooked up to oxygen 24 seven or strapped to a hostel bed or big as an elephant. Now that's not you, right? No, not as big as an elephant. <laughs> I got you, man. Now, um, it does look like here that you're 65 years young. Are you still working, retired, or disabled? I'm retired. Awesome, man. Living the good life. You still waking up with the roosters or are you sleeping in nowadays? Uh, I try to sleep in. Yeah, you've earned that right, right? <laughs> so I totally understand that. So the reason why I'm calling you is because they actually got me dispatched out in your, I usually say the zip code 75204. The next two days, just dropping this information off to other individuals out there in your area who also requested this. Now, do you have any doctor's appointments or anything scheduled the next couple of days? No, nothing. Okay, perfect. So I know you like to sleep in, so I definitely won't be looking at anything towards the morning. Um, it looks like here, it looks like I'll actually be right around the corner from you at one o'clock. So I could put you down for one thirty, or I could put you down for 2.15. Which would work better for you, Julius? Um, one thirty is probably better. Okay, perfect. So can you go grab a pen or pencil uh, for me? I just have some information for you to jot down. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, so again, my name is Gage. That's G-A-G-E, just like a 12 gauge or a tire gauge, just without the U. Last name is Peart. It's spelled like heart, but with a P, P-E-A-R-T. Mm -hmm. And then my direct cell phone is, this is the office line. I call from a, a sideline number. My direct cell phone is 309-525-0029. And then my state license number is the confirmation code here. It's going to be 243-1029. Okay. If you want to just read that back to me, then I have to read it back. Say, okay, you got it. I'll have my state license badge around my neck. It's the same as my state license number. I got short brown hair. I wear a pair of glasses, or if I'm not, I'll say I got some stuff on my face. They call it a beard. So I try to crack a joke. Um, and then I drive a bright royal blue Honda. Should I park in the driveway or the curb better? Driveway is fine. Okay, perfect. So again, I got you down for 130. If you could give me a little window there, Julia, sometimes people got a million and one questions. Sometimes people don't got any questions. So if you could just give me like a 30 to 45 minute window, it'd be much appreciated. Okay. And then I don't know if I can afford this though, Gage. So um, I don't want to waste your time. Yeah, no, that's perfect. I'm not trying to sell you anything. My job is just to show you what options you got available to you. If you see something you like, great. If not, no harm, no foul. I'll get out of your hair pretty quick. Awesome, man. Awesome. Guys, that's how it's done, right? And, you know, I think one thing that Gage that you do really well is you make it your own, right? Like you make it, you found a way to incorporate who you are. You, you add a little humor into it. You add a little, you know, so it doesn't just sound so robotic every time. And I think a lot of times, and correct me if I'm wrong, Gage, like in the beginning, do you see this where agents are coming in and they, they, they sound like they, they, they feel like they have to be perfect, right? Like they have to say the words in the exact order, at ex like exactly how it's on the script rather than just, just flowing, right? And having fun with it and just being a little personable. Um, but, you know, the great thing is, is you, you do that and you still have control at the same time. Yeah, it's, it's all with an in intention. And obviously that didn't, that didn't come out in the first four to six, even nine months. But what, what it really is, is I started getting into this office here in North Dallas with Rob Richmond and I would hear him on the phones. And that's a big, huge takeaway that I would give to all you new people is if you're not going to a local office, you got to get on live Dallas because you have to hear other people doing it. If you're going to just hide at your house and your in your room or at your apartment and not allow anyone to coach you or to hear anyone actually doing it, you're never going to get you're never going to get better. And so that's what changed in my business is I used to dial from home. And then I actually um, connected with Rob at an event and he said, Hey, I'm going, I got an uh, office. Uh, you, you know, you should come in. And I was like, I can, like, I can come in. Like I was in like <laughs> all of this guy, you know what I mean? And so I showed up every Monday and Thursday. And what I really picked up from him, Julius, is he was himself on the phones. He wasn't this phone script. He was calling people, my man, it just like he was, it was natural. Yeah. And so then I was like, the more I can just be myself. So I added in, you waking up with the roosters like you could say are you waking up early or uh, you know are you you know your early morning rise you can say whatever you want but i crack it are you still waking up with the roosters and um and then like uh if they say they like to sleep in 
you've earned that right, right? And you'll get people, hell yeah, I did. You know, because like they, they work their life or they're disabled and they're lazy and like to sleep in. So it's like, you just say these little things to make them show you that you're a real person. And then like my tie downs, you don't believe how many people are like, heart, gauge heart. And I'm like, no, it's pure. But they remember that on the phone. And it is, of course, your name's not pure or heart, but like figuring out a way for them to remember you. Gauge, like 12 gauge pure like heart um I, I got short brown hair i drive a bright royal blue honda you can't miss it it's like give them these uh, like identifying things and you're explaining to them what you look like so it's not they're not like looking out the window i wonder what he looks like it's like i'm giving them something to envision and i'm having them envision me come to the house and that goes a long way i've had people tell me you know i really appreciate you telling me kind of what you look like and no one told me to do that but it was just these little tie downs for people to remember me and then make it on my own. That's the, that was, that's great um, advice. It's like, you see the phone script and then you find someone that you may like. Jamie Cheerio is probably the best dialer on the team now. And he dials on live dials all the time. You should probably listen to him. You don't have to sound exactly like Jamie, but you should probably implement something that he's saying or the way that he goes through his phone script or, or finding Sheila Day. Sheila Day is a beast on her. She's on there all the time. It's like, if you don't have a local office within, you know, 90 minutes to two hours, then get on live dials. But Easton Patton still drives 90 minutes to his Denver office. And that's the number three guy in the company or two guy in the company. If he's willing to drive 90 minutes on Monday and Thursday, uh, you can't expect to get his results if you're not willing to do what he's doing. Yeah. It's, I remember when I started, we didn't have an office here in Phoenix. Right. And so when I needed a little bit of help, I would call Grady and we would just be on the phone every now and then he would have people at his house. And so I'd go to his house to dial. And then we eventually opened up an office. Um, it was probably about eight to nine months after I had started. And then the office was an hour from my house and is still an hour from my house. Did I want to go? No, I didn't want to go. Right. You know, even still, do I really want to drive an hour? No, I really don't want to drive an hour, but I know I need to drive an hour. I know I have to. And now it's not so much about me. It's who can I help? You know, who's going to be around that maybe needs my help, right? And so, you know, is it easy to dial from home? Yeah, it's easier, but actually it can become harder. And the reason why I say I think it can become harder, Gage, is if you dial from home and you don't have these positive influences to give you these tips and tricks and just these little things to become better, you end up creating these habits and routines that don't serve your dialing and you become, you don't actually ever improve. So it makes your job harder rather than easier. So what would you say to someone that has an office within 30 minutes to an hour from them and they choose not to go? If you're talking to that person, what would you say to them, Gage? You're choosing to fail. And you're, 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 you're making a decision that you don't want to get better because I want to ever advise anything to you that wouldn't benefit you. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that my business changed by going to an office if it didn't. I want to just be lying to you. So if you don't believe in me or if you don't believe what I'm saying that's going to help you, then you should probably just quit. And it's a harsh to say, but like, now being in this thing for almost two years, Julius, it's like, dude, let's just not waste each other's time. Like if you don't, if you're not going to get on the live dot, which, okay, look, I get it. Like if you don't want to go on the, uh, I've had agents like this, man, it's really loud in there. And I, like, I can't find anywhere to sit. Okay. So get on live dials. Mm -hmm. Like you have an alternative, but you choose not to do either one of them. So you're choosing not to get better. And I can't, I can't hold your hand through this process. You got to take some ownership at some point in time is what I would say to somebody like that. Cause I have a, I have two people down in, in Tampa and they're six miles from an office. And they told me that Julius. So I was like, okay, cool. If you, if you don't feel comfortable dialing around people, I don't see you on live dial because I'm on there at the office. Yeah. So you're, you're making a choice not to get better. Yeah. And um, no, I appreciate that, man, because, at the, you know, there, there's people on our team that I've had these conversations with and I think about and, I, and you know, I, I, I share that because or we share that because we want them to get better. Right. And if if we're giving them the advice and they're choosing not to implement it, well, that's your choice. Right. Like you obviously don't want it as bad as I want it. And that's OK. 
but don't waste my time. And, and, you know, you probably should, you know, if you're not being profitable, doing what you're doing, well then either change it or change what you're doing altogether. So awesome, man. So, all right. So we talked about dials. Um, what about your in-home, right? Um, you, you're a top producer now. Um, you did over well over 200 grand last year. I, I don't know what you're not. What would you do last year? 343. Oh, I definitely undershot your number. <laughs> so I apologize. <laughs> no all, disrespect, bro. Like literally no good. disrespect. But so you, you, you're knocking on the door of Hall of Fame. Are you going to hit Hall of Fame this year? I'm a little bit behind. I'm at like 167,000 year to date. So as long as I can get that up to 200, I would be on pace. But um, it's truly not one of my main focuses is the, the size that we're growing onto now. Like last year, definitely I could have put the, I mean, I was that close. I could have put the foot on the gas that much more, but um, do I want to hit it? Yes, absolutely. Is it a priority of mine? I, I'd be lying if I said it was a priority of mine, just because my priority now is to help other people hit that mark um, rather than myself. Got it. It makes sense. It makes sense. I mean, mm-hmm. you're growing a massive agency. Um, and, and so, you know, let's say we, you're talking to your team right now and you got a bunch of new people on the phone, on the call and they're about to go into their first appointments, right? So we have people on the call today. Today's their first dial day. They're going to have appointments tomorrow and Wednesday. What do you do to tell them to be prepared for their first run days to make sure that they're successful? What would you do? What videos would you tell them to watch? Um, give, give, it, give them some pointers. Yeah. So um, obviously the, our bread and butter is final expense. So I always recommend trying to get, um, if people have the, the funds to always get in an order of exclusive Facebook leads, just so, I mean, that's what I grew up on in this business. And so I'd be silly not to buy out of people. Of course, I think when you're on a tight budget, the one month and three month old internet leads are great. Um, but to get prepared, I think the eight steps to final expense with Paul McLean is probably one of the best videos out there. Um, and then obviously, who I always advise this to people too, whoever I ask the agents when they complete boot camp, who is it that you resonated with the most? Paul McLean, Grady Polson, whoever that person is that they say, I say, okay, go on to YouTube and type in their name and, and indulge yourself into all of their trades because obviously you're resonating with that person. But I just tell them to indulge into that person's training and to figure out to watch their dials, to watch their in-home, the whole nine yards. Like you got to find the person that you, everyone, everyone's going to resonate with someone more than, than another. And so um, Paul McLean was someone that I really, really loved the way that his structure was and everything. And I think that you, you keep it as simple as this. Look, I don't want you to overthink it when you go in the home. We have a, a client financial inventory. She, I call it suitability. She sounds more fancier. Say smart things. They think you're smart. Um, take a full uh, suitability sheet. As soon as you um, take the full inventory sheet, this is exactly what I want you to say. Okay, Julius, I got a good idea on what the program, the best program would be for you. But just like I do with every family, I want to make sure we're putting you in the best position possible. So give me two to three minutes while I reach out to our underwriting specialist just to make sure we're putting you in the best position possible. But in the meantime, take a look at this brochure. And so I think that another key thing is having all your agents call the carriers and get the free brochures. It reduces sales pressure, makes them touch something. And instead of them looking at you waiting for that price, because that's really all they're eager about is the price, is now you have some actual credibility for them to read after. And if you can tell, like, when I'm waiting for someone to pick up, I was like, well, if you have any questions, I'm here to answer it. So I'm like pushing them to read it even more. And then when, when, you, when you're calling Julius, when you're calling Clay, when you're calling Erica, I would say this. Hey, Julius, I'm sitting here with John. He's 62 years young. He's a non-tobacco user. He had a heart attack six years ago. He's taken lisinopril. He's on Plavix. And it looks like he also takes a Torvastatin. He's had no surgeries. Um, He is looking to cover a a burial. I think it's key to know if they're looking for a cremation or burial. Um, He's looking to cover a burial. I just want to make sure we're putting him in the best position possible. And then Julius, Clay, Erica, John, Nate, whoever your, your manager is, is going to advise you of the right product to, to write. And that emotional impact of your hands being sweaty, you not knowing what the hell to write, 
you're going to remember that a lot more than trying to study some product knowledge at your home that you're really not paying attention to. So the emotional impact of not knowing what to do and then finding a solution is going to be implanted into your brain a lot more than you looking at it for an hour, not even understanding fully what it, everything means. And then this is what you got to say. Okay, perfect, Julius. That's exactly what I was thinking. Hang up the phone. What that does is it increases your uh, credibility. You know what you're talking about. You got the, the second opinion of the specialist. Everyone wants to do what the specialist is doing. And I, I guess my, some of my new guys, they say it on cue. Every time. That's exactly what I was thinking, Gage. Hang up. And like they got it down to a T. And now don't get me wrong. Not all the time will Julius be free or Clay be free or Erica because they're out running appointments just like we are. And so now we've got the underwriting genie. I mean, that thing is going to be a game changer. But I also think that, of course, calling your upline rather than waiting for the underwriting genie to get back to you um, just builds that trust a little bit more. And you're going above and beyond and doing more than what they really asked. Um, and then you, that emotional impact that you have. And then you get off the phone, you say, okay, uh, Gage was thinking, uh, we were both thinking that America Eagle is going to be the best fit for you. And he also said you're qualified for the Mutual of Omaha Guaranteed Advantage Accidental Plan, uh, which goes up to half a million. And that's like the legacy protection. And you want to believe how many times when I was new, Jordan would always tell me to stack that Moo Accidental on there. And I would say those same exact words. The underwriting specialist suggested that we'd also take a look at the Mutual of Omaha Accidental Plan. And then that's, an, that's another, you know, 200, 300, $400 on top of your sale. And obviously the more hooks or more products that you get into the client, the more they're going to stay on the book. Yep. Books. Yeah. So guys, Gage has dropped a ton of knowledge right there. So if you, so first and foremost, your first 20 or so appointments, you should be calling your manager before using the underwriting G, right? The underwriting genie is more specifically geared towards agents that have been in the field. They know how to handle the in-home. They know how to communicate with the client um, where they don't necessarily need to call um, to get guidance in the home. They just need to call to find out about which product to write, right? So if, if your first appointments this week or you know coming or you, you're not through your first 20 or so appointments, you're gonna wanna call your manager. But if you've been in a home, you know, 20 plus times, you know how to deal with the in-home situation and you just need to figure out product placement, that's when you want to use your underwriting genie. And so there was a question dropped in the chat. What's the underwriting genie? We covered it earlier. The underwriting genie is in the in-home help channel in Slack. If you go into Slack and the in-home help channel, in one message, you drop the age of the client, the gender of the client, the, uh, the medications or prescriptions the client is taking as well as the uh, conditions they're dealing with, the, the underwriting genie, it's a staff of people that are, are monitoring the questions that will give you a response on which product um, you can place your client with or the best chance for your client to be placed with, okay? So I hope that helps whoever wrote that question. Um, so guys, you know, there's some great nuggets in there, right? So um, you, you gotta call your underwriting specialist in the home, right? Now, if it's your first appointment, your, your manager is not only going to tell you which product to write, but they're also going to tell you how to explain it to your client. And that's even more critical because, Gage, I remember when I went on my first appointment, I had no idea what the heck I was doing. I was like completely lost. I was do, dealing on paper apps and Grady's like, just go out there. You'll figure it out. And I'm like, figure out what? Like, I don't know. What, what product, what company? I have no brochures. I don't have a business card. Like, what do you want me to do? He's like, just fill out this form, ask the questions and call me. So I'm filling out the form. That's the easy part. Get in the home. I'm like, all right, this is easy. I'm going to write some questions. I call Grady and he spends maybe eight to 10 minutes with me on the phone. And he tells me, okay, we're going to look at America Eagle. It's a whole life plan. Explain these five benefits to your client. It's permanent coverage. The price won't change. Um, the, the benefits stay the same. It has accidental built in and it builds cash value. And it, you know, a little bit more elaborate than that, but you, you lay out those five benefits. So when you're in the home, you don't have to remember all those things from a day or two or a week before it's, 
I told you right now. You write it down as we're telling it to you. And all you have to do is communicate that to your client and then you know, show the client some options, the, the, the options that we, we tell you to, to, uh, to help the client with. So, so don't overthink it, right, guys? So Gage, I'm assuming you did that when you were in the home, it sounds like when you called Jordan. 100%. I mean, that's just what Jordan uh, you know, advised me. Of course, I, I gave it my own little spin and the underwriting specialist just in my mind, say smart things. People think you're smart. Um, it goes back to that as well. And, uh, but I also think I didn't really touch on it about like setting the table. And that's, that's where you go from being an okay producer to a top producer, because you start to overcome the objections before they even are put out there. And so when I get to the table, um, I have the lead sheet printed out, whether it's internet, uh, mail, whatever I, I have. And then I hand them the sheet. I say, okay, first and foremost, I just want to show everybody what my office received. Was that you that filled it out? And they're like, yes. Okay, perfect. So secondly, I always want to show everyone my license here and our partnership sheet. And I'll hand out my license and the partnership sheet. And so I said, I, I represent a company called Family First Life and we're a national brokerage. So what that means for you is I'm not a captive agent. I actually represent all these different companies. And what it allows me to do for individuals and families is to shop around for them, overcoming the shop around objection. And um, I'm going to shop around for them to find them the best plan at the lowest rate that they can get qualified for. Do you recognize any of these, Julius? And they're going to always recognize Gerber. They're always going to recognize Mutual of Omaha. They're going to recognize Transamerica. Sometimes you get, and it gives you a good gauge too on how much they know. If they know five, six companies, I'm like, ooh, it sounds like you're pretty knowledgeable on insurance. That's a breath, uh, uh, breath of fresh air because yeah. you usually have to do a little bit more educating with people who don't know much about it. Um, and then I say, we do everything under the life from breath or after they say one or two, you even say one, I say, great. Most families love the fact that we have household names with companies that have been in business for a hundred some years. Um, we do everything under the life umbrella. We specialize in mortgage protection. We do straight life insurance and then some future income plan as far as retirement goes. But I know I'm here today to talk about some final expenses. And um, I don't have some long fancy dancy thing for you, Julius. I just need to run through this client suitability sheet. And that's when I'll show them the inventory sheet. And I put an X by the health and I draw an X, just like doctors would do, right? X, X. So we're just going to run through two minutes of health, two minutes of some finances. And then I circle it. I'm a really big uh, hands-on person. I want them to engage in, in our conversation. So I, I do a circle with my hand. So what this sheet's going to allow me to do for you is to ultimately assess your situation so I can give my best professional recommendation and a suitable recommendation, Julius, because everyone's different across the board. Once we complete this sheet, I'm going to do some shopping around amongst these companies, like I said, to find you the best rate possible. I'm on your side here, not the insurance carrier side. And so what we're going to try to do is find something to not only fit your budget or your, your needs, but most importantly, your budget. Because budget's the number one thing. Look, I've been doing this for a couple of years. I totally understand why. Like I said, I'm on your side. I'm here to help you find what you want. And with me being a broker, I can really custom create the best plan to not only fit your needs, but most importantly, your budget. Once we find that, we're going to submit a request today to see if we can get you qualified. Fortunately, I don't make those decisions, Julius, but what I'm gonna do here today is make you look as best as possible on paper, submit the request off. It takes two to three days for them to think about if they're gonna approve you or not. So I've overcame the, the shop around objection. I told them exactly what we're gonna do. And then I tell them that the company needs to think about it. But what I'm gonna do here today is make you look as best as possible on paper and submit it off. That's solid. That's solid. Guys, I hope you guys are taking notes because, I mean, this is what top producers do, right? We, we, we give structure in the home, we have control, and we do it the same way every single time. That's why Gage is, is a top producer. That's why he's, he, you know, he, he does what he does, right? And he's leading a big team because he's able to have people on his team duplicate what he's doing. Guys, if you're getting value at, out of what Gage is providing, drop a GP in the chat drop a G gp in the chat if you're finding value out of what gage is sharing with us today gage thank you man this is awesome you know it's what's awesome about this business i think is that anyone can do this right and i know we say anyone can do this but who's really going to choose to do this is what's what's pretty cool right just you know there, there's no innate talent that's required it's literally learning word tracks and the order of how you do these word tracks 
right? That, those are the only two things that separate a top producer from a mediocre or a low performer is who's going to take the time to, to, to memorize these word tracks and put them together so they go in a, in a sequential order so that way it makes sense for the client and it allows you to do the same thing every time, right? And, every t- and if you do things the same way every single time, you know, repetition is the mother of all skill, guys. So when you start, your skill sucks. My skill sucked right? Like I was all over the board. I would say one thing one time, I would say another thing another time. And then my, my results were inconsistent because I didn't have consistency in my action. So as soon as you guys put consistency in your, in your day-to-day actions, whether it's dialing, whether it's the in-home, that's where you're going to start to see the difference in your business. That's where you're going to start to see the consistency in your results and in your, your earnings, right? Because it's, it's, you know, doing the dial activity that Gage talked about, doing the same thing in the home every single time and finding your flow. What Gage says is different than what I say, but 90 or so percent of it is exactly the same thing, but it's worded just a little different, right? You know, and anyone else that's in here that, that's a top producer, we're all saying basically the same stuff, but you have to make it you. A lot of this business is, Yes, we have a flow. Yes, we have scripts, but that's, you know, that's the structure of the business. The key of this is that other 10% is making it your own and making it who you are, finding your flow, finding your voice tone, finding your voice in this business. And once you find that last 10%, that's where your confidence goes up. That's where your belief goes up. Would you agree with that, Gage? Yeah, a thousand percent. I mean, what you guys just heard is like three or four different people's little tidbits. Like once I heard Steve Steve Giordano say, my two objectives today are to find something that not only fits your needs, but most importantly, your budget. I instantly implemented that into my my structure of how to set that up because the dude's the number one guy. Like I can't be Steve Giordano, but I can definitely say some things that he says. Mm-hmm. And that's what this is about. It's just ripping off from people who, you will look up to your aspiring to be and then duplicating what they do and making your own thing. I mean, that, that's all this business is. That's it, man. That's it. All right, man. Well, Hey, I know you poured in a lot into us today. What's one last maybe tip word of advice that you want to leave folks with today, whether, you know, they're new, maybe they've been here for a while. Maybe they, um, maybe they haven't hit the goals that they've strived for when they started. Um, it, you know, what, what would you want to share with the team? Yeah, I mean, th- this is what I shared out in LA when we were out there not too long ago, but I think the, the three core principles to success here are going to be belief, accountability, and activity. And it starts with belief, number one. If you don't believe you can do this, if you don't believe they're going to pick up the phone, if you don't believe you can go over to Bob's house and help him with the final expenses, then this isn't the business for you. If you don't believe that making the dials is going to get you better then then you're you're not you're not in the right place and then accountability julius is going to be me committing to the the weekly uh, meetings the people who are the top and best producers at ffl treat monday's call treat wednesday's call treat thursday's call treat friday's call treat saturday's call as can't miss meetings they're free information they're free business acumen and free mindset for you to tweak that in your brain. So you have to be accountable and actually show up to those things because Julius isn't going to be calling in you guys and saying, hey, where are you on the call? Hey, hop on this call. It's, it's your responsibility to take ownership in your business. And then the, the accountability also is getting to the office or getting on live dials. You got two options. That You got literally got two options. One is super easy and convenient. The other one, you're going to get a little bit more uncomfortable. And with the live dials too, Julius, I don't, I don't think it's just showing up and putting up a black screen. It's actually engaging and participating in it, whether that's asking questions, whether that's dialing unmuted. It's actually engaging. The people who are the strongest here are the best participants because they participate in everything. And then with the, the activity, it's just you, you got to put in the work. You got to put in the dials. You got to put in the door knocks. You got you to gotta, you got to get better. You're not going to get better wishing you had more appointments. You're not going to get better hoping that someone, you know, will pick up the phone, but you made 88 dials. Like it's putting in the activity that 
people you're seeing are doing. So I'd say if you can live by those three principles and start, if, if you've been here a while, like you got to believe that this works because there's just too many people making money for us to be special. You got to take accountability in your business and take ownership and do what it takes. And three, you got to put in the activity. It's not going to just come natural. You're going to have to fall on your face and pick yourself up. And like you said, dude, this is repetition, man. This is just like going to the gym. You're not going to get big swole in two weeks. You're not going to start seeing a difference in your body until probably two months. And so I was 120 days into this thing, struggling, putting in resumes. So when I got new agents after two weeks telling me, man, I just don't know if I can do this. It's like, man, you ready to quit on yourself in 14 days? That was quick. You know, like you just, you, you got, you got to actually try and put in the effort and I've lived through it. So I know it's really hard. It's mentally challenging. It's simple what we do, but it's mentally challenging. So uh, a way to overcome that mental block is getting on the calls, hearing the knowledge, reading books. Uh, if you have poor mindset, like, like I did myself, I read extreme ownership. Like you got, you got to figure out ways to get over those mental blocks that are stopping you from being a 20K producer. Cause I mean, I could do 20K in my sleep, Julius, at this point in time. Yeah. And if you're running into a mental block, I think the other thing is reaching out to your manager because a lot of times we've, we've all been through it. I mean, I've been through engagement. We've all been through it, right? We've all cut our teeth. We've all hit our head against the wall. We've all had no shows. We've had doors close on us. Like we've all had it, right? So if you're running through a mental block, whatever it is in the business, there's always someone here that's been through what you've been through. Um, so for sure. And I, and I think I think just this one last thing, this is what I told my agents because Jordan told me this uh, a while back and it stuck with me. He said, dude, don't be afraid to call me. Make me earn my override. And I was like, oh, okay. I'm going to take that to heart. So I started calling them all the time. And so that's why I tell my new agents now, look, I'm not in the business of making money off of people, but I'm definitely in the business of making money with people. So I'm always going to be available for you. Don't think I'm too busy or I'm too big to not help you out because I was in your position. And if I don't answer, I'm going to get back to you as soon as I can. So I apologize if you reached out and I didn't answer right away, but I do run appointments every week and I do help out a lot of agents. So I will get back to you. But if you don't reach out, you're going to get lost in the mix and I'm going to forget about you. You got to make your, your name be known. You got to reach out to people. That's awesome, man. Well, Gage, um, man, seeing your growth in this short period of time has been, it's been exciting uh, to watch from afar. It's, it's, um, it's inspiring um, myself and a lot of others to, to grow and push beyond their own limits and boundaries. And so, um, I, I, I truly am excited to be a, a business partner with you. Um, I know we don't work hand in hand together, but I know if there's anything that I ever need, you'll pick up the phone and vice versa. If you ever need anything from me, you know, I always got your back, bro. So um, thank you so much for pouring into our team. Guys, if you guys found value, any value today from what Gage shared, please drop a 100 in the chat. Let's show our love. Gage spent his time. He didn't have to do this. There's nothing in it for him. He literally jumped on to help us out, to help you out. So that way you guys can grow your business just like we've done, or, or you know, we were in that same position like you guys were at some other point, right? At, you know, months before. So um, Gage, thank you again, my brother. I appreciate you. If there's anything I can do to ever repay you, you know the number, bro. Yeah, absolutely, man. I appreciate you having me on. It's always an honor to give back to people. And I I do this, guys, to get better. I mean, this is going to help me coach my team and to get in a better position. And I promise you guys I'm nothing special. I like to just say I'm a product of the system. So peace out. You are. You are, for sure. All right, man. Take care. Thank you, guys. Let's go out there. Crush your dials. 15 appointments. Don't stop until you hit your appointment goal. Get on the live dial team. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Take care. Bye-bye.